Well, happy lunchtime, everybody. The open sign is on. You see it open. Not real big there. It, it, it doesn't look real big, but it's there. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Steakhouse on a Wednesday. We open the doors, sit back, relax, and enjoy T-Bone's baseball talk for the next, uh, I don't know, uh, foreseeable future, the next hour or so, or however long uh, you all want to join us. My name is Dan Vaughn, voice of the Kansas City team. I'm glad you're along today on a, on a Wednesday. It feels more like spring throughout the Midwest, so uh, that's good news. Some showers here and there, but for the most part, all good. Uh, if you are hearing me, you know the drill. Uh, just uh, let me know with a, uh, a thumbs up. A thumbs up means you're hearing me. That's what we're, we're talking about here. So a thumbs up means you're hearing me. We're glad you're along. I don't see anybody thumbs up as of yet, but uh, let's just hope they are. I'm seeing, I think I am okay. Oh boy! What another week of T-Bone's uh, hot stove, and uh, we uh, we're going to be joined by Joe Capietra here in the second part of the show. We're also going to talk tickets, as uh, uh, we're going to. We always t- you've heard me say it in the broadcast many times. Casey and Company. Well, we're going to hear from Casey and Company per- in just a moment, live from there at the ballpark. I presume somewhere there in Kansas City. I, I don't know, maybe at the ballpark, but hear from Casey. Talk tickets. Uh, there's been some announcements you've seen on Facebook this week. We'll go through those as well. The hot stove update. Uh, I want to give you uh, the most recent news, which would be the Carlos Diaz signing yesterday. Uh, that's good news. We'll get more to that a little bit later. Joe's going to join us, and he's going to talk a bit about that. Uh, very interesting, at least I'll tease this, the bullpen <laughs> the rotation didn't look too bad on paper, and dang it, that bullpen didn't look pretty pretty good either. So uh, uh, good to see uh, Damon. Hello, mate. How you doing out there? As uh, the uh, steakhouse officially opened here on a Wednesday, we talk T-Bones baseball, most between the lines, but we also outside the lines. And I mentioned Casey's going to join us just a moment. And Casey Mueller are going to join us uh, again. Uh, a lot to get to today. We'll try to also cover some of the association news. Uh, there's not a lot out there, but there, there's some, a couple of names that you may or may not have seen. We're also going to go through with Joe the, the week that was. A little shorter conversation this week than last week. Uh, but, and of course, as always, your questions, your comments, all that. And we're going to unveil some nightly promos and whatnot. But uh, glad you're along. So uh, the drill is you join us. It's interactive. It's your show. We're talking T-Bones baseball here on a Wednesday in the hot stove. And, okay, now I, I've been, I, I got this email a little earlier, too. That it's going to be a, a combo platter today. Not only do we have Joe Cap yet to joining us, we're going to have Joe joining us. We also got, not to, when I say Casey and company, we have Casey and company joining us because uh, Cameron's going to join us, too. Cameron Eisen is going to join us from the tickets. And, I, and this is going to be good because it's the first time I think we've done this. We've done, of course, the single interviews. We've never done two at once. So this is going to be fun. So let's join uh, them, bring them in right now. I think they're about ready. I'm going to bring them in in uh, just a moment, and they'll get the countdown, and we'll bring them up here on the stage. There they are. Well, let's see here. Can you, you guys just squeeze a little bit closer together. Uh, you know, Can you guys hear me? You guys can't. Okay, let me pull the volume up there. Uh, that's what I need to do is pull my volume up just a moment there. Give me just a moment here, and we will. Uh, there we go. Oops, there we go. There you go. I got you guys both on the screen. Can you hear me? You guys can't hear me. Okay. I can't hear you guys. Let's see what I'm doing wrong here. Uh, da, 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 da. Well, anyway, I, well, I, I can't hear you very well, but uh, you guys can hear me. I guess that's the thing. So as long as everybody else is, Cheryl, good to see him, Mike, as well. So everybody's hearing me. So that's good news. I'll bring me back into the uh, the broadcast as well. But uh, for some reason, I'm not hearing them. I don't know why I'm not, because I always hear them. You guys, uh, oh, like, you guys, uh, uh, hmm. let me just see here. I got your audio on. I got your video on. I got you guys on. Uh, well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and kind of walk through this here and, and try it. Uh, they are the best, Cheryl. They are. Uh, they are the best from tickets. No, I can't hear them. Let me see if I can. All right, well, I'm not hearing you guys, so let me try this. Okay. Hmm. 
What is going on? Give me just a second. While we're talking. Anyway, you guys can't hear me, but I'm going to try this anyway, okay? I'm going to try it, and we'll try to fight through this. Uh, first off, I can't hear you guys. Let's try this. I don't know. That's not going to work either. Huh. Give me just a second here. Oh, this is the part part that's so much fun when you're the one man band. You get to uh, you get these little items that happen here, and let's just see if I can. I don't know. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to put you guys down just for a second, and I'll be right back to you. So give me just a second. I'll be right back to them, and let's just do this. Let me uh, give you guys the. Let's kind of just produce on the fly. How about that? Because I'm going to bring them back in just a second. You guys, bear with me a moment. Because this is the fun part. Boy, uh, Vaughn, you're really doing good today, aren't you, mate? There we go. Let's try something here. I'm going to try to. Well, this is a fun part. All right. We're going to try it again here in just a second. I don't know why I'm not hearing them. That's really weird. Really odd. I've never had that trouble before. So let me uh, just try this real quick. And just trying a couple things here. I will bring them back in just a moment, but, uh, oh boy, Vaughn, what's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to try it again here. I think I've sort of, uh, Sort of got this uh, sort of done here. So let me just fire this bad boy away here. And there we go. I'm going to try it again. I'm going to bring them back tonight and see if I can hear them now. Let's try it again. Three, two, one. Uh, do you guys hear me now? Do you guys hear me? I don't hear you. I don't know why, but I'm going to go ahead and fight through it. And let me try if I can. All right. I'll fight through it. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be quick, so I'm just going to kind of read lips here. I'm going to try. I'm glad you guys are along. I apologize for the audio, but everybody else is hearing you, which is good. Uh, yeah, I got to love technology, Mike. Uh, it's got to be. All right, first off, uh, tell me uh, or tell us uh, what's going on in the ticket office. What's going on down there? You guys ready for the season? Donna, good to see you as well out there. All right, uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just give you guys some bullet points here because, again, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Let's just go to the bullet points. I know that we've got, uh, uh, first off, uh, we got, A, single game tickets are coming up. When does that start? When are single game tickets coming up? You guys can't? Okay, I'm hearing you. All right. Uh, what well, as far as uh, as far as what what can fans do? Okay, because I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of folks have these questions. It's been a weird off season, right? We've we've been kind of in flux. We it's no secret, right? We've been in flux. It's it's no crime. Uh, but what are fans going to do? They're saying, you know what? I I I need to I need to I, got, I have questions. What do I do? Do I reach out via email? Do I call you? What do I do? Cameron, what you got going on in your seat? You guys doing groups? Uh, you got, uh, I'm sure you got the groups. You, I always say in the broadcast, I always say, you know, Casey and company, or I'll say the boys downstairs in the office, they're down there in the, you're in your little cubicle. You guys are all just typing away on the phones. Uh, groups, tell me about groups this year.
one of the new things that we've talked about, we've talked about the broadcast, Morgan talked about it. I know they talked a bit about it at the press conference a couple weeks ago, but uh, uh, the new Founders Club, what, what what can you tell me about the Founders Club? Uh, uh, any details that, I, I mean, I've given, I've read the details, but what can you guys tell me about the Founders Club? You know anything about the Founders Club? Am I putting you on the spot here? I was a lot of fun two weeks ago when we came up there and had the press conference. I know you guys, uh, you guys have got the new, we got the new logo gear. We've got uh, the energy. Just, I felt it. Did you guys feel it too? I, I feel uh, something. I mean, I'm getting goosebumps kind of talking about it. You guys still get the same that, I mean, it's always fun this time of year, but it seems a little different this year. Like some really cool excitement. Also got some other uh, things in the works, and I know that I mean, it's I've seen them every day. So we got Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. The one I saw that I love is that the uh, the, the Warrior Wednesday. That one was one that uh, that came up, uh, I guess overnight. I guess it was or over overnight in the uh, it was on my meeting. I moved my screen around there. I'm twisting the fly here, but uh, the Warrior Wednesday. Uh, what do you guys know about the Warrior Wednesday? What do you can tell us about that. By the way, they, I'm telling us you guys sound great. Morgan's somewhere at some state basketball tournament, so she's saying you guys sound great because you know she she's kind of an expert on sounding great on this show because she makes me look better because I don't sound as great. So I had to use her. You guys are helping me out today. I appreciate it. As you see, Casey and, and Cameron, Cameron Eisenman and, and Casey Miller there from the ballpark, the ticket gurus right there. Uh, one more thing that's I mean it's exciting. I, I think it's great uh, this. Uh, I'm gonna put up the screen there as well, and uh, get the three man, three Scott screen. But uh, the Tyrell Matthew deal is coming up as well. Uh, he's kind of a big deal. The Chiefs are kind of a big deal, uh, folks. I, I mean, how is that going? Obviously, I'm sure it's going well. But uh, folks can reach out to you guys or go to the website, right? Looking forward to that, I, and I know there'll be some other surprise guests as well. But uh, a lot of fun stuff, guys. I know we, I know we're 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 having a little time, a tough time hearing each other, but I appreciate you guys, uh, it, folks. They need tickets. They got to get tickets. They got. What can they do? Give me a final spill on T Bones tickets, two thousand twenty. Thank you guys for being on the show. And again, I apologize for the connection, but we're, we're hey, it works. We're working through it. I appreciate you guys so much. And uh, I can't wait to get up there with you guys. It's going to be fun. I mean, the energy again, it's just, I mean, we're, we're bouncing off the walls. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Hey, have a great week, everybody. Thank you guys. See you guys. There they are. Right there, the, the ticket gurus. That's right. That, that, that pair right there is just simply phenomenal. And what we, I don't think you guys realize just what a great front office we have. I mean, you, you, I talk about it all the time, but I mean, Casey 
it c comes with just such enthusiasm and such, I mean, you guys all know her and then Cameron came in with the new blood a couple of years ago and just, I mean, he, what he and Nick do in groups is just phenomenal. They've added some more staffing as well, but uh, that's, that's a group that's, it's a lifeblood. I mean, those folks, what they do, phenomenal. We're very fortunate to have them. Very lucky to have, and Casey does a lot too. I don't think people realize she has a lot of things about the scenes too. She's very helpful with the host families. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I, I've had a little, whether it be some crazy thing I, I don't know about or something something that comes up and I go to her and she's always there to help out and just a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, teammate. And again, Cameron as well. Just glad to have them and appreciate their time. Can apologize for the bit of a delay there. Uh, if you guys don't tell us what they're saying, we had no clue what their answers are to your question. Well, we had a little trouble there. Sorry about that. Uh, there. Uh, uh, all right, get back to the questions and comments here. Quick, quickly, wish you could. Sorry about that. Uh, Cheryl, some folks heard, some folks didn't. I do apologize for that. Uh, Donna, good to see you. David, good to see you. Uh, Dwayne, the thought that were foreclosed, ever paid Kansas City. Uh, that, uh, Dwayne, that has all been taken care of. That has all uh, been uh, taken care of. The uh, T Bones are. Uh, back in business, no, we're never really weren't in business. But uh, uh, in case you missed it, uh, Dwayne, the team was sold to a new local ownership group, and uh, Mark Brandmeier is uh, now the new uh, the new owner. And his uh, group have come in and done a phenomenal job. Got some great things planned. We'll go through through those things in a moment as we get back to the hot stove talk. But uh, really, um, just. Uh, great things ahead for us in our ball club. And uh, so Dwayne, yes, things are all going good. Uh, new one, everything taken care of. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, everybody can, uh, from uh, Morgan as well. Okay, guys, um, I get apologize for that the connection there. I don't know what happened? We've not had that problem, but, you know, I, if, you, if you knew what goes on to the show and how to make this thing fly and what we're always trying to do, I spent uh, – Oh, about an hour yesterday, two hours yesterday, working on some new items for you guys as well for the season. And this is an evolving technology that uh, I'm having a heck of a time keeping up with. We're doing it. And I actually hired a new uh, one of our new uh, summer staff, our media team for the summer. And the young man will be coming in and, and expertise in a lot of this stuff too. So that'll be a very, well, a young expert because basically what I've learned, if you guys know this, if you guys have kids, you know this already, uh, especially kids that are in their, say, teens, the 20s, uh, they they know all this stuff. And this is what they grew up with. They grew up making videos and uh, memes and all that. Uh, uh, us older folks, uh, we had to use a typewriter in high school. Yes. So uh, one of those things you see in the old movies, a typewriter, right? All good. All good. Okay. All right. Where were we? Let's get back to uh, the, the show. The show is the Steakhouse. Glad you're along talking T-Bones baseball. Joe's going to join me in a moment and get that lined up for you too. Um, good stuff for Joe Cafietra. Uh, a couple of things I want you to hear, listen to is I want you to listen to the bullpen. The bullpen seems to be a pretty, pretty solid um, situation. I mean, the, the pen, um, when you when you see Carlos Diaz being signed yesterday, and then you also, uh, of course, you've already grabbed other uh, McGranny for one. You've got some other bodies here and there. You start seeing those bodies, and you realize that uh, uh, you know with, with Diaz and and, and, and McGranny, and then you throw throw in uh, the uh, T Bones also adding uh, Tyler Followell. We're going to talk about him and as well in the back end of this thing. You start adding those players. And you suddenly are building a couple of a depth. It's like we talk about all the time. This league, this level, you got to have depth. You got to have depth. And I think the, the one more important thing is you got to have rookies and guys in classific classification to work. Joe talks about that as well. And we're going to get into that. We're going to talk a bit about that as well with Joe uh, down the line. As though we need to definitely get, uh, uh, get, get with him. I'm going to do a little welcome to you guys to the show. I hope you guys are having a great afternoon. Uh, Brad, good to see you as well as our good friend from Cleburne. We'll have Brad on down the road after we get back from spring break and uh, Brad Allred there with the Cleburne Railroaders. We'll get to some of those transactions as well that have news of note. Uh, there isn't a former T-bone that will come across that wire. 
talk about that as well. But I'm going to jump into the Joe Capietra conversation. Again, if you'll indulge me, we're going to uh, have him join us via phone, which we did last week. So uh, give me a little moment here just to kind of get things kind of geared around here because this is another new little project for us. But uh, Joe Capietra uh, joining us on the line. And uh, Joe, um, about two hours ago, gets us caught up on the week that was with the T-Bones hot stove. Well, the Steakhouse continues here on Wednesday as we are joined by the man from the top step, Joe Caffey, after the T-Bones manager. And uh, another busy week, Joe, in the, uh, the the hot stove. Stays hot. Uh, first off, uh, how are you doing this week? You've been busy. Good, good, good. Every, everything's going well, and uh, it, was a, it was a good week for the T-Bones. You uh, started off, we, we went on the air last week after we taped. Uh, this happened around noon when we went on the air last Wednesday, but uh, – uh, you start off with a guy that uh, a lefty and Eric Stout from a from a Royal, as a matter of fact, a guy that was a big part of things early on last year, went off and uh, uh, left the organization, got signed, and he's back. Uh, uh, plans for Eric Stout this year? Yeah, we're happy to have him back. Um, he was one of those guys that got signed early. Uh, Cincinnati Reds organization pitched at the double A AA and triple A level after he left us, had a good season. Unfortunately he didn't get resigned uh back with them and uh was a free agent and, and we were uh glad to get him back. Rotation guy? Yeah, I mean there's no doubt he's a rotation guy. He could do a number of different things and has done that in his career, but um you know, he is a guy that could could hopefully give give us a lot of big innings and and get us deep in ball games. So that's the plan. I mean, when we get everyone in the house, we get a better idea of where everyone fits in. But you know, as of now, yes. He he also took over last year when when Delgado got signed when uh, Randall Delgado. I know you like to have veteran guys that have an extra voice and can kind of lend uh, credence to some of the younger guys. Does he fit that that role again? That that kind of that veteran voice in the dugout as well. And Daisy's not pitching. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, it was unfortunate that it wasn't, or unfortunate for him, uh, it wasn't too soon after. Um, you know, we made that we made that move when Delgado signed, and then I think it wasn't not even two weeks, and then you know Eric Eric signed. So, um, but he, he's he's able to do that kind of role and. Uh, I don't know exactly what, you know, what his his lifting is going to be uh, when he comes in, but I, I'm sure he'll have an impact with, with the pitchers. Just some folks in Sioux City are probably a little so, uh, sore with the uh, T-Bones brass signing a uh, former Sioux City Explorer right-hander uh, Tyler, uh, Tyler Falwell. Uh, boy, this guy was a super bullpen piece back-to-back years. Uh, was signed by the Phillies organization I came back association. That's a coup there, Joe. How'd you pull that one off? Well, it was just a, you know, it was a trade. We don't want to make anyone sore throughout the league. <laughs> it, um, we're just trying to make ourselves better. And it was uh, obviously, he, he was a very good pitcher in our league. I uh, got to know him a little bit at the all-star, at the all-star game. He's a really good kid. And, you know, once the conversations start coming up about possibly, you know, acquiring him, um, it ramped up pretty quickly on my side, and uh, we were able to pull it off. And it was, you know, we're we're happy to have him. Suddenly, as you go into spring, well, spring training in you know about eight weeks, nine weeks, whatever it is, you've got a guy in Fallwell. Then yesterday, uh, signing Carlos Diaz back, a lefty that's been. Uh, uh, the flame throwing left, you suddenly got a nice uh, little back in the bullpen there. Uh, that's a nice uh, right-handed, left-handed combo uh, with Diaz and Falwell. Yeah, McGrady fits in that kind of role too. Um, you know, and uh, we have a couple other guys back there, like you know, uh, Coast. Uh, you know, uh, Jake is another guy. Um, Cozart, right? Cozart, that's a, that's a guy that could fill in. You know, those kind of things. So. We feel like the bullpen shaping up. Um, I feel like we could have different combinations too of guys, you know, pitching, you know, that back end situation. And, you know, the rookie status with Farwell and McGraney really play in even bigger 
to the whole, you know, scheme of things on our side. Yeah, Jameis and McGrady signed on the 2nd of March, uh, uh, but uh, the voice you're hearing, Joe Calpietro, manager of the Kansas City T-Bones. My name is Dan Vaughn. We're talking here in the Steakhouse on a Wednesday. All right, the, the middle move is, and it's one of those deals, too, uh, that I, I see these things and you kind of say, okay, I get it. Uh, your, your move on the 5th, you uh, traded Danny Mars in Sussex County, and then a day later you signed an Aaron Knapp. So you, 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 you had a roster spot moving Mars, and then signing Aaron Knapp. W- was that the thinking there? I mean, you had to get an outfielder. Was that, that the plan? Well, it's just there's a couple different things. I mean, unfortunately, Danny Mars was a very good player for us last year, very good person uh, in the clubhouse and with the fans and everything. And uh, we, we hate to – have to get rid of such a quality person and player like Danny, but obviously a trade um, has to benefit, you know, both sides. And Sussex got a really good player in Danny Mars. Um, the LS4 situation that we have with our roster is a little jammed right now, and Danny being an LS4, and I know the fans don't understand right. all the details when it comes to that. Um, but a, we were able to sign, you know, Aaron Knapp that is a lower classification uh, player in our league, um, an LS3 status, and we feel that he's a similar type of player as Danny is. So um, so we felt that that was, that was a trade-off for us and, and clearing up the spot, the, the LS4 spot. And, getting the guy an opportunity to play, too, that we care about is also important in the grand scheme of things. Um, we don't want to be overloaded in spring training with certain classifications and knowing that and not being able to get places for players to play that we know we want to, that they want to play and are very good players and have the ability still to play. That's yeah, something you mentioned last week was the challenges is that whole classification thing. We're going to do a show. We, we need to do that. Well, we'll do that right. When the, when the roster gets more settled, we'll talk more about that in detail because that's, that's a real interesting topic, the whole LS, uh, the classification thing. A guy that, uh, uh, that I, I, I want to talk about in uh, Daniel Nava who retired, but boy, it's, it's rare in our business uh, to get a guy like that. I mean, not only was this guy a former big leaguer, but he, he, big, he played big league ball at a high level, was a big part of things when he played the big leagues. He was also a heck of a citizen, a great example, a great leader. I mean, all, all the accolades you could ever think of. Uh, Nava was a special player, wasn't he? He was a special guy. He was a special guy. You know, and Daniel still on – you know, the organizational side, he's still trying to get signed, still feels that he has the opportunity to possibly get with a major league organization, if not a player or a coach. So his career in baseball is not over by any means. The, the kind of, the you know, the word retiring is he just didn't know if he was going to be able right. to go through another stint of independent baseball. Um you know, with the salary and being away from his family and things like that factor a lot of these guys' decisions. Um, so that that's retiring from the Kansas City T-Bones right now. Um, I would kind of leave it. We're hoping that Daniel Nava gets an opportunity with an organization or as a player or a coach, you know, and he's, he is, Dan, just a special, special person. Um, he, he brought that you know, that pedigree um, that we'd like to have around. And um, a lot of guys, you know, I remember the stories. Two o'clock in the morning, you know, the guys calling me and they're hitting in the cage, you know, typical. <laughs> getting Sometimes you get calls at two o'clock in the morning and they're not for your players uh, hitting in the cage and, and, and working, for, you know, the next day. Uh, we had those kind of guys that were – get calls two o'clock in the morning that they're, you know, they're working out and they're leaving the ballpark. Yeah. I was sitting up there one night about one thirty doing some work to get ahead for a road trip. And, uh, and they were out there. Daniel was out there with three or four of his teammates out in the cage. I, I saw the light come on. I was like, what's going on over there? And then uh, they were out there working hard, working hard. 
Oh, uh, transitioning just as we wrap things up here with Joe, uh, talk about guys like Nava. And, and over and over again, I look at these this list of players over the years. How much is being a good citizen factors into what you do? I mean, how much of work do you do in that end? Well, there is. I mean, and that's a great point, Dan. It's very important. It really is because, you know, when I sign these guys, I'm I'm bringing them in to be very good baseball players, but also they have to fit in with in in the community, and that's my obligation to the organization on on that side of it also, just not on the wins and loss side, but having guys that are are good people that are going to fit in and and be you know really good citizens. In, in the city of can you know, in this, in Kansas City, um, it, it's very important. Um, it always has been my in my career. Uh, and if you're not that kind of guy, you're n- you're not going to be around very long. Gotcha. Final thing. Busy week ahead. You got uh, uh, you're still you're working the phone, still going hard at it. Yeah, I mean it doesn't stop. You know, I kind of chuckled internally when you said, you know, when things settle down, we'll have a discussion <laughs> about the roster because it, it, it's constant changing, evolving. Um, you know, it's it's going to get a little bit busier here. You know, major league camps underway, and they're going to be starting to make decisions with their players. Um, that's always an opportunity to get the type of player that we're looking for. Um, so it's it's going to stay busy on that side, you know, also in the next uh, couple weeks to come. So we're excited about it. Um, can't wait to get back to Kansas City and, and see these guys, um, you know, start performing. And it's, it's, it's an exciting time of the year. Joe, appreciate it. We will uh, chat in a couple weeks after spring break for me. How about that? Sounds good. And you, uh, you, you all take care. <laughs> Appreciate it. That's Joe Caffietta right there. And there we go. Joe Caffietta is running us there on the line. Appreciate Joe and uh, uh, good stuff right there. Very interesting. Uh, again, there's no uh, – almost like my lights down there. Uh, there's no real slow time, really. Things don't slow down, he said. And uh, uh, we will discuss the LS thing, but I thought it was interesting. A couple things that uh, stood out. Uh, the citizen thing, we've seen it time and time again. Uh, I had a really special uh, opportunity to get to know Daniel Nava from a different standpoint than maybe uh, most of the fans did. Uh, I got to admit, when I first met Daniel Nava, uh, here's a guy that I knew uh, in the big leagues. And, and you're going to think, okay, here's a guy coming back to the independent ball where it all began for him trying to find his way back. And, and, and you're thinking, okay, he's probably not going to be really happy to be here, but that wasn't the case. He was ecstatic to be there, ecstatic to be part of Kansas City, he loved representing the ball club, uh, left it all in the field, uh, was, was a great leader, great uh, lesson teacher, and a guy that it, when you're around, you watch him go about his business. Even as a broadcaster, I learned a lot about being pro. I mean, you learn about being a pro from a guy like that and watching uh, Daniel Nava, again, who uh, – was uh, just a, a phenomenal part of the T-Bones this last year. And, again, he's going to be hopefully, and as Joe said, uh, retiring from the T-Bones but not from baseball, either a playing opportunity perhaps or even a coaching opportunity. And I can see that guy uh, doing that. But as Joe mentioned, uh, it was an, it's retirement from the T-Bones but not necessarily from baseball. But uh, also an uh, interesting note that, uh, that Joe also brought up, I, I think we we kind of – I say it a lot, but I think you really heard Joe's voice, and he's a true, genuine guy, that citizenship, quality of people matter. I mean, it matters. And I can think of, I can't, off the top of my head, over three years, from 17, 18, 19, I can't think of any uh, uh, real knuckleheads or bad seeds or bad eggs that have come through Kansas City and represent our ball club. I, I can't say that for a lot of stops I've been in. But the, he, Joe, as he said, is a certain type of player, a certain chemistry to buy into the culture. And not just the culture, what you're trying to do to get back to affiliated baseball, but also just part of the whole Kansas City thing. And and Joe's very sensitive about that. I thought it was very, very interesting. Nate, good to see you, buddy. uh, Jacob as well. 
Uh, Dave, all you guys out there, glad you're along here. Steakhouse on a Wednesday. We'll run through the hot stove, and I've got a couple of things in the back end promotion-wise, but let's run through the hot stove items again. And we're kind of playing, kind of playing a little bit of little bit of catch up here. But uh, again, my name is Dan Vaughn. Glad you're along on your Wednesday. That's right, Wednesday here. You know, I had this really cool. I don't know if I still have it. Let me see if I got it here. I had a really cool thing. Let's see if I can do it. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see here. Uh, I think I have it. This is going to be kind of fun. So let's do this on the fly. Wow. How about that? Oh, huh? there we go. The overlay. I, th this is what's fun about this whole thing is that I, that constantly am constantly learning new odds and ends in this uh, software. Although there we go. I got to kind of move over uh, just a little bit. There we go. Anyway, you, you can kind of see uh, the uh, overlay graphic there, which is kind of cool. Kind of cool. I mean, it's, you know, or I can even do that. Here's what I can do too. How do you guys like this? One? Let's try this one. Hold on. Let's try that. Do you guys like this one better? Perhaps let's try this one. How about this one? How about this one? Or do I have another one? I think that's it. Maybe it. Yeah, I guess that's it. So here we go. How about that one? There you go. That works, right? Well, there we go. That one works a little better. Anyway, I, the graphic overlays, that's one thing I was working on yesterday. Again, these are new things to me. When I learned my video editing back in college, uh, this stuff didn't exist, but uh, able to lay some overlays and things like that. So yay for me. Yay for me. It worked. Yay. Something finally worked technology-wise for DV. How about it, baby, huh? There you go. Okay, let's get to the hot stove uh, items of note. We'll just run down. I'm going to put up the roster here for you guys as the T-Bones. Another busy week, steady week. It's a... Uh, uh, it, it's like that now. It, 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 it pretty much rolls like this every week. Uh, and I mentioned that Eric Stout was the one we talked about last week as we came on the air. We had the breaking news. Really, literally, we were on two minutes late because Chris Brown actually sent us the, the update. But Stout's back. Uh, you heard Joe talk about it. It sounds like the role of probably a mentor, pitching coach, whatever you want to call it, an extra bonus guy on the bench. Of course, Bill Sobey's your pitching coach, and Bill will be back as well. But having an extra guy, an extra voice, an extra body on the bench that can help out with that. And Eric was very uh, big about that last year. So it'll be good. He's a, he's a good voice, a lot like Scott Carroll was when Scott was there. But uh, Stout, of course, we talked about him more last week in detail. Mentioned the Nava uh, taking off the roster and retiring from the T-Bones. Danny Mars trade. And it's one of those things I talked about with Joe, and I mentioned this to you guys last week. There's certain things that happen. You kind of go, okay. Uh, what's the deal? And it starts to make sense. This move to that move. And they all start to be, and Joe told us, you know, you start to see these things. Okay. That's why. And the underlying layer was also the fact that Mars and LS4, Aaron Knapp, who was brought in a day later as a, as a, uh, a free agent signee in LS3, uh, I'm sorry, LS2, I believe. And that really frees up your roster. And you've got, you know, we're, we're getting that more down the road when we get uh, kind of caught up in the season, but uh, the whole roster thing is intriguing. You only have, when we talked about that, the broadcast only has so many veterans uh, talked about how Winnipeg a few years ago had too many and had to carry, uh, can only carry one less player because of it. And, you know, that kind of, you, you, you want to be able to balance out, have a couple of rookies and have them, have them contribute. And we'll talk more about that as, a, as we get closer to the season. So uh, again, uh, Danny Mars tried to Sussex County uh, and that brought in Aaron Knapp. But on that trade though, pardon me, uh, the, the part of the trade that, and I mentioned this to Joe, there were some Sioux City folks that messaged me going, you guys got a steal there. You got a coup. You got a coup. Tyler Falwell, that name should sound familiar. Two years in a row, he was dominating in the bullpen for Sioux City, had a stint with the uh, Phillies organization. He is back in the association, and he is back with Kansas City. How about that, huh? Uh, just how good was he the last couple of years in Sioux City? Uh, pulling those numbers up for you, uh, in 2018, he had uh, 28 innings of work, two saves, but he was uh, all in relief, 20, 28 innings, 33 strikeouts, an ERA of a 0.64. He allowed just two earned runs in 28 innings. That That's a guy. Remember we talked about how Steve Montgomery, the skipper of the Sioux City Explorers, oftentimes 
built he really built this whole strength of his ball club or built this type of ball club from the bullpen out. And I remember I told you guys a few years ago, uh, they scuffled in the rotation when they were having a little tough time in 14, but he really built that thing by adding quality bullpen arms and built his team from the bullpen outwards. And uh, Falwell, one of those guys uh, that was uh, definitely part of that uh, uh, 2018 club where they had a strong bullpen. They've had a consistent, strong bullpen. And then last year when he came back for the Phillies organization, a 3.13, uh, he worked in 74 and two-thirds innings, struck out 104 in 74 and two-thirds innings. That number right there is phenomenal. That, that, that is getting it done. That's a guy right there, the league batting against him last year. You know, I don't have that number, do I? I don't have it. I do not have that number, but to tell you what, eight and five last year, he did make three starts and uh, he did make three starts, finished eight ball games, had a save, but 26 earned in 74 and two thirds. I can pull up his uh, association. Number. Well, actually, you know what? The association doesn't do that, do they? Do they do that? I don't think they do. Let's just pull it up and see. I can't remember. I know the, I, I, I'm kind of doing my stat packs in Australia this winter. I, I get a little, uh, Confused sometimes what point streak does and doesn't do, but but uh, uh, follow well. Let's pull this up real quickly here and just see if they have the average against. I don't remember if they do or not. You know, point streaks aren't coming up anyway. So oh well, oh well, hang with them. Okay, but uh, young man is out of two out of Tucson, Arizona. He's a, a big kid, 6'5", 225. Tyler Falwell. Again, former Sioux City Explorer, but a really good bullpen piece. And you pair him with Carlos Diaz. Diaz last year, uh, a little injured here and there. But Carlos, and again, you've got two guys. Talk about strikeouts as a weapon. How about this? Just heard the 104 strikeouts there. How about Carlos Diaz? 51 and 30 innings last year. 51 Ks in 30 innings last year. 2.10, uh, 30 ball games, 13 saves. He's got 22 uh, saves as a T-bone uh, two years ago at 18, 18 and two-thirds innings, struck out a 27 with those nine saves, a 1.45 uh, with Kansas City over the course of the last two years, 38 and two-thirds innings and those 22 saves, and I had him with 78 strikeouts. How about that? So Carlos Diaz is back. You have Diaz on the left side, Falwell from the right side, and as uh, McGraney, as we mentioned too, Ty, uh, Joe mentioning that uh, he would be in the mix as well, that uh, the T-Bones would see uh, not just Jamison McGraney, but also Jake Cosart, both guys in the bullpen. That bullpen to start opening day, at least going, at least going to spring training, it's got four pretty solid arms. And we saw last year, and really the last two years, what Sioux City could do with a good bullpen. And we really saw last year too, the depth – of the pitching staff, that bullpen was called on in St. Paul on a couple of occasions to make spot starts and help that uh, St. Paul club win the title. And that depth in pitching, whether it be in the bullpen or the rotation, so very big in the association, and that's uh, good to see. So there's your your update right there. Now, one more piece of uh, the puzzle. As mentioned, you have the, the absence of Danny Mars, Aaron Knapp, as I mentioned, was a former Seattle farmhand at A. Arkansas last year. It's the guy that's got the speed. This guy is going to be, you know, you look at the T-Bones uh, you know, with, with at least what they got initially right now in the roster, this thing can be pretty speedy because uh, what Nat will bring to the table is pretty impressive stolen base-wise. Last season in Arkansas, the Texas League, he swiped 15 bases in uh, 87 ball games. First career, he's stolen. And, and this includes his time at uh, University of California, the uh, Pac-12, he is a career 100 and there was 126 stolen bases and only been caught 52 times. He is going to be on the base pass a lot. 15 swipe last year. He stole 18 the year before at uh, high A Jupiter in the Florida State League for Seattle. Uh, pardon me, for the Marlins. That's uh, that's the Marlins farm in this Florida State League. And then he uh, swiped 22 uh, the total, that season overall between both uh, Greensboro and Jupiter uh, stole 30, probably uh, stole 34 
in 2017 in the South Atlantic League. So this is a guy that's uh, got some, some stolen bases and uh, going to move a lot. So you start looking at that, you look at that number, and you also factor in the, the whole deal with, well, Dylan Tice is back, of course. Uh, Dylan's always a threat at the top of the card. You've also, you're going to see uh, the addition of Rashad Crawford. Talked about him a couple of weeks ago. That's a guy that's going to be stealing and stealing often as well. You've got a little speed there. And Ramsey Mono also figures in there with the, with the good base running skills. And it's kind of kind of interesting. You're seeing three themes right now. Bullpen depth, rotation depth, quality at both spots, and some speed factoring in as well. Remember last year, it wasn't so much the speed for Kansas City. It was efficiency. The T-Bones led the association in efficiency, caught the fewest times, the highest success rate of stolen bases. Uh, Brad Auburn saying that 69 days away, Danny Vaughn will be here before we – yeah, it will be. It's crazy, isn't it? It's, uh, it's flying by. I was talking about that with my wife last night. Uh, this thing is uh, is around the corner, and uh, uh, you're going to be looking up, and all of a sudden, boom, we're here. And it's uh, it's it's fun. It's uh, it's that time of year, and uh, as you heard the, the folks, the ticket office, it's exciting. Uh, Cleburne also making a few moves as well. I'm going to get to that in just a moment, but there's your uh, hot stove update right there. Questions, comments as I move this uh, over here. I'm going to get my screen clear here. But uh, questions, comments uh, for you guys as I got all kinds of nonsense popping up. There we go. Uh, oop, one more thing here. Let you guys hear that. There we go. But, uh, yes, uh, all good as the uh, 69 days away. Boy, Brad, you're counting them down, aren't you? Uh, but uh, good to hear and good to uh, uh, hear from Brad Albert as well. But, uh, yeah, it, 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 never, it, never, it never ceases to amaze me just how – how uh, fast this thing is and just how it, uh, it, it, it flies by and you look up and it seems like it was just Christmas, but uh, T-Bones will be ready to go and I'm be ready to go as well. Okay. Uh, questions, comments, you guys are, it's your time right now. I will go get to those. And while you're waiting to get those questions and comments lined up, I will blow through a couple of items from the association uh, transaction wire as well. Uh, just a couple of little items here and there. Uh, as far as things that stood out to me this week, St. Paul brought back Matt Salter, a very big, a, a good young pitcher, good right-hander, uh, was with Gary a couple of years ago. He's got a little something. Uh, congratulations to Jose Saramo, one of my favorite guys in the league. What a classy young man. Jose, of course, MVP in 2018 for Sioux City. His contract was sold to Puebla in the Mexican League. Congratulations to Jose Sermo. is a, a very well-deserved young man from Puerto Rico. Uh, now lives out in California. Just a great guy. And I, I knew this was in the works, and I, and I thought he was already signed, but officially announced today. Good to see that for Jose Sermo. Also, a couple of my odds uh, for uh, Chicago releasing Josh Goosen Brown, Trey Vavra, and Carlos Zambrano released as well. Of course, Carlos is a big ambassador for the Chicago Dogs last season, former Cub, and, and, a, and a good show there, a good showman as well. He was released. Uh, Chicago did sign Mike, uh, Mike Krause, formerly of the Canberra Calvary in the Australian Baseball League. Cleburne, Zach Nerrier, boy, I love that player. Brad, you got him back. Uh, Brian Saucedo. And Landon Holyfield also signed in the bullpen. I uh, mentioned uh, other couple items as well. Mason Davis inking with Milwaukee. Of course, that was a trade in the offseason. Uh, they also signed Zach Hartman. And then Miles Smith, the former T-Bone, also inking with the uh, Milwaukee club as uh, they get um, their season rolling along offseason. A couple of names. Note uh, Daniel Robertson uh, has been released for Cleveland. I, I assume – uh, Daniel will be retiring or co into coaching, but I don't know that for sure. Uh, lefty Nathan Forrest, who was with uh, Kansas City last year for a short time, has uh, resurfaced in Cleburne as well. Uh, as far as uh, other names of note, just kind of scan here. I, I didn't mention this earlier, and I should add, congratulations to Robert Calvano. Robert Calvano is, is retiring. He's a phenomenal young man another good citizen. I know he's been looking for a job there in Kansas City. We wish Robert well. Robert's one of my favorite people in that clubhouse. There's so many of them. They're all my favorites, but uh, the best to Robert, a local guy who uh, went, you know, twice his sign with the fillet of ball has come back and uh, 
was a part of the 2018 club and the 2019 club. We wish Robert is the the best for uh, Robert. Yeah, Brad, you're right. I knew that. I knew that he was at Oregon State. I knew that because uh, Joy Wong, a former Perth Theater and St. Paul Saint, a good mate of mine, I mentioned that. I knew that already. I don't know why. I've totally blew Brad. Thanks a lot for that. Millie, good to see you as well. Uh, XFL first, Dim. XFL. <laughs> you got the playoffs already, do you? Uh, actually, I'm going to a game after spring break. Uh, my wife has a former student who works in, I believe, in group sales out there. So we'll be going what used to be Globe Life Park will now be uh, Globe Life Football Field. So we'll check that out. Uh, Brad says, we do have March Madness first together. Yes, we do. Uh, yeah, tomorrow I've got an early, early, uh, early men's breakfast, and then I've got to watch uh, Tech in Texas. Yeah. Third time's the charm for that season series. Let's hope for the Red Raiders, hopefully. But uh, uh, let's see what else we got in the steakhouse here. Other little items as well. Uh, Sioux City did sign Matt Marksbury, former big leaguer, uh, former Brave. It was signed late in the week as well, so look forward to that. I like what Sioux City did here, too. They picked up Chase Harris, uh, former Gary uh, Railcat that uh, was in the Frontier League. Chase a real – He, if you like Colin Willis last year in the association, you'll like Chase Harris, a very similar type player, uh, you know, has some of similar, similar tools, uh, maybe not quite the average that uh, – that Willis has, but you, you'll you definitely like him. But he's back in the league. Good to see that. Uh, very uh, good, versatile outfielder for Sioux City. Uh, just kind of just checking here. A couple of their items here. Nothing. Uh, don't see anything more. Just uh, Eddie Medina back in St. Saint, uh, Saint Paul. Uh, that's going to be good for St. Paul. Texas, Zach Lamond. Uh, that's an interesting guy. That's a guy that got no run support last year had some very big moments against Kansas City, pitched very well. His final two times is the T-Bones, but Lamont, former Rice Al, is back with uh, Texas. So just a couple of names. Some of the names are on the hot stove is uh, the uh, T-Bones hot stove news of the day. Mentioned it already just to get caught up. Carlos Diaz is back. Now, Joe was telling me off the air there's some things in the works here and expecting this thing to keep moving. I expect some pretty good uh, – news and pieces to come in the next week. If you liked last week, getting a couple of bullpen pieces and an outfielder, you probably like this week as well, as things will be kind of uh, transitioning in that hot stove. And, and like Joe said, it just doesn't stop. And that's not just for Kansas City, it's for Winnipeg, Cleburne, you name it, everybody in the same boat. So, uh, but uh, Tim, good to see you. Questions, comments, guys. Love to hear from you, what you got. I'm going to give you guys a couple of items too here in the steakhouses. We are open. For business here, just shy of the 1 o'clock hour. Glad you're long on a Wednesday. Talking Kansas City T-Bones baseball here on Facebook Live. And always glad to have you guys. So uh, good to see you. everybody chiming in and getting that uh, that spring thaw out, right? All right, a couple of items of note I want to get to. I mentioned these earlier. Let's get to them right now. Let's start off with this one. First of all, first off for you is I'm going to bring this down and bring this up. How about this? Meet the Team Mondays. This one came out on Monday on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, meet select T-Bone players and Sizzle as well. Right behind home plate for the games every Monday this season coming up. Uh, should be great. Uh, going to be a fun one right there. It's going to be a great opportunity for autographs and uh, meet and Sizzle just in general. Uh, we'll probably be doing some things down there as well for our broadcast. We may even uh, tape our pregame show from down there as well. So that's going to be exciting right there. But that'll be uh, every Monday, Meet the Team Monday, as uh, that one uh, on the schedule. How about Tuesday? All right, what do we all like on Tuesday? Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. What is Tuesday? It is Taco Tuesday. Fiesta Tuesday is right special on tacos and margaritas to the seventh inning. Uh, yes, um, <laughs> it's not really Taco Tuesday, but it's close enough. It is Taco Tuesday, Fiesta Tuesday. I uh, got your Rita, got your taco. Who, who would want that, right? I mean, come on. Tuesday night, the summer, a little warm, get you frosty, want a cold, cold margarita and your tacos as well. Who doesn't love tacos, right? Uh, tacos are 
they're, they're their own food group, right? The tacos, right? Own food group. So that'll be coming up on Fiesta Tuesdays. By the way, uh, some exciting things, culinary coming our way. We're going to get to that a bit later on in the season before we get the opening day, but some exciting things happening. There's a brand new concessionaire system in place, uh, new, uh, uh, new items coming as well with this whole new ownership with Mark Brandmeier and company. That's being revamped as well. So exciting going forward that we'll have those uh, new items. One of those items, how about it? Tacos on a Tuesday, Fiesta Tuesday. That'll be all this season, and that will be to the seventh inning of T-Bones Baseball. So that is awesome. So how about Wednesday? I mentioned this earlier, and we'll get into it as well, but it, it, it's very, it needs to be noted that Warrior Wednesday is a, a, uh, is, a, is, a is a good one. It's something that we've uh, talked about over the years, and I don't know if I've got it for you. Let's see here. Uh-huh. I had it for you guys earlier, but Warrior Wednesday, we had it talked about earlier. Uh, Warrior Wednesday is, uh, let's see here, boy, Vaughn. There we go, Warrior Wednesday right there. I have my graphics hidden there. I was doing pretty good all of a sudden. Again, I drive two different softwares, so this is uh, one of two. Uh, Warrior Wednesdays, present your military ID, the first uh, – uh, first respond or your first responders badge at the box office. Receive a buy one get one, fifty percent off baseline reserve tickets. You want to do that? So uh, Warrior Wednesdays and uh, always one of those things we really support our troops, our veterans. You know, we we I love what we do during the during the the ball game in the second. We salute our veterans and and our, and our active duty members as well. Kansas City uh, is just a huge supporter of. Uh, our troops and our first responders, and we will uh, be saluting those folks on Wednesday nights at the old ball game. How about it? Also mentioned too, uh, one more time as well. I want to get this to you, but uh, Tyrell Matthew, his uh, uh, kickball coming up. That's going to be on uh, coming up in November. Or November. He'll be playing football in November, right? Uh, May 16th is up to date. And uh, yeah, tickets on sale right now at tyromatthew.org. Also, there's a link on our website. You go to the website, there's a link uh, there across the top, and you can uh, click on that and across the uh, news feed and also take you to the online ticket page as well that we talked about earlier, but uh, that also in the mix as well. So, a lot of little items going on here. And I mentioned already the uh, single game tickets. A couple of items too uh, for the league. And uh, I want to give this to you guys the American Association Trial Camp. It's uh, just a little about, about a month away, April 15th to 16th at Airhog Stadium in Grand Prairie, Texas. Uh, that'll be for all the teams. Every team will be represented there. Uh, if you know of somebody you think you can do it or you got a your arm's feeling better all of a sudden, hey, that's the place to go. Try out camp there on April 15th and 16th at Airhog Stadium. And not to be outdone, the T-Bones also, as we always know, we have the T-Bones open tryout as well. That's coming up on May 6th, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the ballpark. Registration at 9 a.m. Uh, come dress to play. Uh, do, do it. This is a true story, okay? I've told this on the air before. Uh, a few years ago in Gary, 2015 or 16, I believe, I think it was 15, uh, they had the same, every, everybody does an open tryout almost right before uh, spring training. And there was a guy that came in as jeans and his catching gear and a Crave pack from uh, from White Castle. Yes. And he had this big bag of, big bag of Crave, you know, the Crave pack is like 30 burgers, little, little mini sliders, little small burgers. It was like 30 of the small burgers or 24 small burgers. He was in jeans and he put catching gear over the jeans. He wasn't prepared. He didn't have spikes either, but he had a bunch of Crave pack or a bunch of burgers from a Crave pack. So don't be that guy. If you're going to bring a Crave pack, make sure you share it with everybody else, I guess. I guess. Better yet, go get you some, uh, I don't know, across the street, get us some tacos and bring them to us. I don't know, but uh, don't be that guy. But yes, true story. And somewhere I've got a picture of that guy. Uh, with his Crave Pack. Maybe I'll bring that up on the shows in the future, but Crave Pack in uh, uh, the come dress, to, come dress position. You're a catcher, wear your gear. You're not, bring your glove, your bats, whatever. So that's coming up as well. Also, don't forget that the uh, single game tickets are on sale March 17th. 
coming up as well. That'll be uh, uh, for uh, Wyandotte residents the 17th. You folks there in uh, Wyandotte, you got the 17th. Everybody else, the 19th. That is next uh, Tuesday and next Thursday, I believe, because uh, the 18th is my daughter's birthday, Caroline, and uh, also poor sweet Caroline, who's under quarantine for 14 days, self-quarantine, of course, come she came back from Rome. She's not even at the house. She's been home a week, but we've got her sequestered away for the house. And, but her birthday is the 18th, so that's why I know it's Wednesday, and she comes out of quarantine then. So uh, Sweet Caroline will be back in general population on Wednesday uh, to, to her studying in Rome. Uh, uh, let's see here. Jay says, hi, fight up the season to start. Just wondering, take the American Association is giving our new owner. Yes, yes. Uh, very good question. Yes, that is all – uh, been done. As a matter of fact, I think, I, I believe, I believe um, it was done back in November. It's been a while. And we we kind of, I think we kind of alluded to it just a bit. Uh, oh, no. Bueno closed? No. <laughs> as, a, as a Texan, the Bueno is a big player, but actually not it. Gosh, thanks a lot, Don. I appreciate you giving me the bad news. Uh, but anyway, yes, uh, ownership was approved at the league meetings, which were, they've been a couple. There's the GM meetings, had those back in October. The ownership meetings were in November. I believe there's been one more meeting since then. But yes, ownership's approved, signs still delivered. Oh, yeah. And they're ready to go. We're ready to have them. Mark is, uh, and Mark Brandmeyer, Mark McKee, and Matt Perry, of course, Chris Brown, uh, Morgan. Uh, Kalenda, which we heard from Casey and, and Cameron, a cast of thousands. And uh, no, I hired a one of my media staff this uh, yesterday, and we got more folks. And we're adding staff uh, as we get along. We'll get to all those folks down the road here. But um, yes, I'm fired up as well, Jay. And that's a very good question. But uh, uh, the uh, it, you know it's it's a we it's like I said, it's been a different off. It's been a weird off season for a lot of us, uh, mostly. Because we, we, we began the offseason kind of in flux. And now we go into the, the tail end of it, fired up, ready to go. A lot of life, a lot of pep on our step. I know Morgan's fired up, and she'll be joining us in two weeks after spring break to give us an update on what she's got going on. There's plenty of things going on. But yes, uh, great news. Uh, Riffle Tiffany, as that what that says? What did I miss? I missed something there. Anyway. Thank you very much, Mandy. Appreciate it. Uh, uh, let's see here. What else we got? Questions, comments, final call here. You guys got a uh, final call. Is, uh, no tacos from talking. That's it's bad news. That, that was on my – do you have a rotation, a food rotation? As a heavy kid, I've got a food rotation, and Taco Bueno was on it. It's on my wife and I's rotation here as well. But, uh, yeah, boy, that's uh, – that that's not good for business, folks. Well, anyway, things are challenging, and that's uh, uh, but uh, oh well, we'll have to eat tacos at the ballpark. How about that? It is its own food group, right? Danny's has got tacos, right? They have tacos as well. So, okay, coming up on future shows, let's give you a couple of items of note to pass along to you. Well, you guys, your questions and comments, not a lot of them. Um, first off, we'll be joined by Connor Ryan, I believe, in the. Uh, Two weeks, I believe, if I remember correctly. I mentioned Brad will be joining us at some point. I haven't really scheduled that with Brad yet. Uh, Morgan will also join us. Morgan Kalinda will join us in two weeks. Joe will be back as well. We'll have a pretty uh, loaded show when I get back from spring break because we'll have a lot to catch up on the hot stove. Plenty of interviews as well. Uh, when we'll be able to, but, but you know, I, Austin, dang it, dang it, dang it. I meant to ask Casey that as well. We'll get that for you. I, I know that we've got it. I don't have it on today. I wore my new jacket last week or two weeks ago. I do have a new golf shirt. I don't know the timeline, but know they got some big plans. Uh, I can tell you there's a lot of space in the, in the racks to get new stuff. There'll be new gear, and I know they're excited for it. I know it's something Casey's been working hard on, uh, but that'll be coming uh, forthcoming. I don't know when the exact date is. Let me get a date, a date for that for you if uh, anybody – is watching back at the ballpark, shoot me an email. I don't know if I uh, see anything here, but uh, but uh, yes, we will have something of the sort, I guarantee you. 
Uh, we will have something as far as uh, uh, T Bones gear coming, uh, merch, whatever. It's uh, any, the new logo and all that. That's going to be part of it as well. So, uh, good question, though, Austin. I'll find out for you and we'll get an update on that as well. We'll get Casey to update us. We'll get her back on and get an update as well from the souvenir merch department because we've got, got to find out. You know, a lot of folks want to get that new gear. Uh, last call and questions here. The Steakhouse about to pull that uh, close sign up for the week. I want to give you guys a chance to uh, fire off anything else you got. Are you guys fired up? Are you fired up as I am? Are you, does the roster look pretty good so far? I wish Mike Mark was with us today. I know Mike would have roster questions, but uh, uh, Nathan, how you doing, mate? How you doing, bud? How was your trip, by the way? It was good? Hopefully good. Miller time, Miller time. Of course, he uh, is the man. He is uh, does a phenomenal job with our field, and there's no field without Miller time. Glad he's uh, turning us along here. Again, I mentioned uh, next week's show will not uh, – I, I don't put it this way. I'm not promising we're going to have a show next week. I am going to be out of the country with my lovely wife, but – we will try to have something, but if I, I I would not count on it. If we do, it'll be one of those things I will give you. Um, oh, it was uh, hey Jeff Miller as well. But uh, two weeks time will be the next show. So two weeks time, and Morgan will be joining us. And again, as I mentioned, we will have uh, Connor Ryan joining us down the road, and we're going to go through all the teams of the division at some point, and we'll have Brad joining us. I appreciate Brad always being a part of things as well. Hey, Jeff, Miller time too. Good to see you, bud. And uh, Tim says, never had a chance for 2018 uh, championship pennant. Well, I, I will tell you this. And by This is by no means any kind of uh, punch in the guts to anybody. It's a different time now, Tim, and a good time. It's, and we always had a great time with the T-Bones. We're going to move forward and some exciting things ahead. And I know, and I just, you know, as I mentioned two weeks ago, the day after being in Kansas City on Tuesday for that press conference, you feel it. I mean, if, if you're not fired up what you heard, what you saw, if you didn't even see it, go to our Facebook page, watch the press conference uh, redo the press conference. I mean, you hear Mark's excitement talking to everybody in the staff, you know, getting like Mark McKee, Matt Perry, and Chris Brown. I mean, you, you, you know, what's so unique about this too. I'll even give you this from my, from my seat. You've got some new and some old blood mixing together. And that, that's some great energy. You're not just, you're not out with an old and the new it's, it's a real combo of the strongest assets. And I really believe uh, you got some very strong assets. I've told you guys, Back in the summer, you weren't buying an old beat up, banged up jalopy. You're buying a pretty good car. Just need a little paint. And that's what you got. Let's see what we got. Anything else, guys? Questions, comments, final call here. Let's just see here. Uh, retro. Yeah, you go. Re Tim, I like your thinking. The retro, retro pennant, right? I like that. I like that as well. Very good. Uh, big thanks to Joe Cap. You had to rejoining us on the show today as well. Uh, always via phone. Very good. Appreciate him as well. Uh, when we have uh, <laughs> uh, Austin, I don't know about that. I don't think, I, I think, I think midget wrestling uh, is uh, gone. We'll ask Morgan in two weeks. It was a very, uh, very good thing. Your 2008 pennant and banner are lonely, says uh, Tim. Yeah, I, I bet it is. I bet they are. But uh, thanks to Joe for joining us there. But uh, yeah, the uh, you got to have a pennant, man. Got to got to got to You got to. You got to. Um, Austin, I don't know. I don't. I don't think so. But I do know she's got some great things planned. I can tell you that. So we're going to be unveiling those items as we go forward. Last call here. We'll give us a couple more moments here. We'll close the steakhouse again. All the updates are on Twitter. My Twitter. <coughs> Excuse me, Dan Vaughn Jr. and of course the Candace T Bones Twitter as well, Facebook updates as well, all that for you coming on our social media channels. Exciting to get the. What's exciting too is now I'm starting to talk to future employees as a part of our media staff. Getting very fired up about that, and you know it's getting closer when you closer when you start to see your staff start to come together, and that's uh, that's good. Um, Jim, hey, it's all good, Jim. You watch us on replay. Watch, watch some replay, uh, Joe, and uh, and also had Casey and uh, Cameron for the tickets. Casey Mueller and Cameron Eisenman, very uh, fine teammates of ours. 
Jim, good to see you there. Everybody else out there, good to see you as well. Thank you for joining us at the Steakhouse. Uh, for all you guys, I appreciate you. There's no no show without you guys, and I say all the time, even Brad, <laughs> even Brad, even though he's not a T-Bone fan, we have the we have the best fans in the association. I love you guys, what you guys do, and we're just going to keep adding to this thing and keep going and uh, keep giving you more and more content. Some exciting content uh, ahead for you uh, when the season starts. Okay, I believe that's about everything I got for the day. Uh, recapping quickly as he Jim says he can't wait. Again, T-Bones, Carlos Diaz in the fold. Aaron Knapp, an outfielder with the Mariners, or Mariners organization, is joined us on Monday. Of course, the trade of Danny Mars for Tyler Falwell. Uh, that all this week's uh, headline transactions. And also uh, Daniel Nava and Robert Calvano. Robert uh, retiring and going into business. And then Daniel Nava uh, retiring from the T-Bones, but not from the game. So uh, there is your update on all that. Again, well, the show's in the books, folks. How about it? Let's, uh, let's look forward to the next, uh, actually, two weeks' time as it's going to be uh, uh, a little, finally my wife and I a little time to uh, be together. It's going to be fun. We need that before the season starts. Okay? The open sign's there. Going to put the closed sign up. Glad you guys joined us. Thanks for joining us here on the Steakhouse. Appreciate all you guys joining us on the show. We'll see you again in two weeks' time or – if I can find good Wi-Fi, which maybe I can find, we might come away from the beach next week, but I imagine it'll be probably just uh, two weeks' time, okay? Blessings to all of you. Go T-Bones. How about it? Bonafide fun. And uh, don't forget those tickets available right now on uh, ticket information right now online, so we check those out. And, again, the individual tickets go on sale next week. You wind out, folks, on the uh, 17th. Everybody else on the 19th, get those tickets now, okay? Whew. All right, we'll see you next week, everybody. Actually, I'm sorry. See you in two weeks, everybody. As we say in Australia, we'll see you on the broadcast, everybody. By the way, Paul, if you're watching this, mate, cheers, mate. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.